It's an absolutely beautiful day on the homestead. It is obviously very snowy outside, but the weather is in the plus degrees. So I figured I would take you guys all on a walk around the homestead to kind of show you what everything looks like buried in the snow. So we do have a couple paths because as you've probably seen in my past videos, we have a small dog. So we usually like to carve him out a couple paths where he can go to the washroom. So sorry in advance if you see any of those markings. <laughs> We actually kind of passed a portion of the garden here. You can kind of see the lumps where we have garden beds. And then our garlic is sound asleep in that further bed over there. And as you kind of get over to our frames here, they're pretty covered in snow. Little thermometer there. And we're gonna be planning on um, putting some coverage over here. So we just use a plastic kind of insulating uh, film and that kind of helps in regards to warming up these beds so we can get a little bit of an earlier planting. Our compost has definitely seen better days. You can see some dead peppers there. It just comes along. Some nice insulating straw. More dog prints, squirrel prints. <laughs> A frame. Other framing. Oh boy, I can't wait to start planting. We actually have already started some of our onions and some flowers, as well as some peppers and some tomatoes. Just love everything. So we're back inside, rosy cheeks and all, and I wanted to show you what we've gotten started already for our garden for 2022. Oh, so exciting to be gardening already. So we've already gotten a head start on our onions here and they're growing very, very well, nice and straight because this year we actually added a grow light to our arsenal of planting supplies, I guess you could say. And we're pretty excited for that um, just because we found with starting this early, we didn't get enough sunlight through this window as we did starting a little bit later in the season and closer to summer. So they've really appreciated having the extra light um, to make them grow nice and strong. There's a couple of floppy ones in there, but it's not too, too bad. We also yesterday uh, started some of our pepper and tomato varieties that are um, an eight to 12 week germination time frame. So we're on the higher end of that, but usually what I do is I'll plant my seedlings, um, thin out any ones that didn't work out, and then um, transplant them into larger pots. Some of them go into pots that they stay in all year, and some of them will actually just go out into our garden bed. Likewise, we started um, some of our flowers that required that 12-week germination rate. And I wanted to get a little bit more in-depth, I guess, into information about that. I find as new gardeners or even experienced gardeners, we're given so much information that can kind of clash with what we personally think or our own opinions or our own experiences. And while I definitely have leaned into the information I've gotten, I've definitely started to discover my own. One of the things that we really changed this year was making sure we paid attention to all of our planting dates. Now, our estimated time for our last frost is the end of April, um, which makes a lot of sense because last year around May 7th, I had planted most things out into my garden. So I'm anticipating the same kind of timeline for this year. And so we're kind of in that 12 week, 11 week mark, um, which means some of our plants can get a start inside. Um, some of those plants are pepper varieties, tomato varieties, um, our onions, certain flower varieties. So I have Shasta daisies, um, columbine, and straw flowers. So those are all ones that I have started behind me. But with that information comes a little bit 
of trickiness, I guess you could say. You're given a date frame that you can kind of plant, um, which makes it a little bit easier for you to plan out your garden, but those date ranges are susceptible to error. So in the case of having maybe a colder spring that has a couple cold snaps, you don't wanna to get too much of a head start on your plantings. So for us, we planted about half of the amount that we wanted to do a little bit earlier and in the next two to four weeks we'll continue planting a second sowing of these vegetables and I think that really sets us up for success because not only does it allow us to have um, some like succession planting it also allows us to um, mediate any of those risk factors like frost or um, dampening off disease with my plantings or anything of that nature. And so I'm pretty excited to have that knowledge now um, and to be able to try different things that might work uh, for us and might not. I think it's all a learning curve when it comes to gardening and I think that's the joy of gardening that I really find. So definitely something I did was I started planning my garden a little bit more in depth. Uh, so I have another list here that I did in my handy dandy uh, garden notebook and I kind of wrote down the different varieties of the certain vegetables that we were going to be planting. In brackets I put the days to maturity which are an important factor in growing and then I kind of made a note here about what was um, recommended on the back of the seed package as far as planting and it's interesting to see um, even between like cauliflower uh, a lot of people will just say cauliflower is cauliflower, but different varieties give you different um, properties, I guess, that you could follow. Kind of like a love language in a sense for people. Um, not everybody has the same love language. Um, and just like that, not every plant has the same love language. So in the case of these cauliflower here, we have a super snowball, which matures in 65 days. And then we have an early snowball, which matures in 52 or 50 days. Um, and I think it was interesting to see here what one requires longer germination and what one requires less germination. I would have assumed that the one that required a longer time frame in ground would have had an earlier start date, but that wasn't the case as the suggested information on the back of the package. Um, it was five weeks instead of six to eight weeks for the secondary one. So I think finding out that information and uh, researching that information is really Really beneficial for any kind of gardener to allow a better planning for your garden itself. So that's what I spent my weekend doing and I'm really glad that I did because I realized that some of our tomato and pepper varieties required an 8 week to 12 week germination. So since we were in that 11 week mark, I decided that I would plant a couple of them. And that was really exciting to me to get our first, um, I guess, kind of fun vegetables in the ground. Like I, we definitely have the onions going, um, but to me, they're not very fun to do. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tidbit, um, sharing the garden full of snow, as well as just a little tips and tricks that I've kind of learned along the way. Um, and if you have any tips and tricks for me, please leave them in the comments because I do read every single one of them. And if you love garden content or growing content, give us a follow because there's a lot more coming this year. I have some pretty big plants and some cool video ideas for you guys. So have a great day and we'll see you later.